let us in. Yeah, nice to speak to you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm not too bad. Yeah, I'm a, a bit spooked out by the movie that I just watched. <laughs> but it, no, it was great. It was good fun. Congratulations oh. on the play. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Uh, Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you watching it. Before we talk about the actual, the actual movie itself, the first thing that I was, I was, I hadn't realized until I, after watching it actually was that you were responsible for the, the badass movies. And this yes. is kind of like completely opposite. I mean, we've got like a vet, veteran ensemble cast and all of a sudden it's all it's come kind of the other way around. How did that come about? Was it, was that intentional or just by chance? Um, it was intentional. I, I, you know, um, I just, basically found this urban legend online, the Black Eyed Kids. And uh, I thought it was just fascinating. A bunch of kids with black eyes, completely black eyes, with no whites in their eyes, uh, that would go around and knock on people's doors and ask to be let in. I just thought it was so creepy. And so um, it inspired this story. And so I, I just, I loved these films growing up like Goonies and, and, and you know, obviously as I got older, movies like Scream and I just felt like there needed to be a movie sort of for this demographic for the kids and um, so we, we basically put this script together and and uh, went, went out and shot it and, and had a lot of fun doing it but you know a lot of the film it's sort of the 12 year old female version of a badass if you think about it I mean yeah. I mean she, she's this girl who everybody kicks around and then in the end she kind of has to step up to save the day just like Danny Trejo and, and, and Danny Glover. So it's, it's, it's sort of my 12 year old version of, of that film. It happened in this town over 50 years ago when there was only one eyewitness. Frederick Munch. You mean me, Mr. Munch? His house is totally haunted. So kind of the genesis was it was actually the, the the urban legend itself, the creepy pasta, whatever it was, before the actual yeah. script came came along. So I mean, there's there's obviously there's different versions that I was looking at. I'd actually read about it just recently. The the, the, the kind of the story of the original journalist. I can't remember his name now. Um, yeah. But yeah, was, there was a journalist who wrote about it in, in the newspaper. But then it's kind of it's, it's had various versions, and then Ghost Hunters said it could be vampires or maybe ghosts or maybe extraterrestrials. I'm not going to give anything away, but. Was there anything specific that made you decide which way you wanted to go with all these different variations that you had to play with? I just felt like the, the way that we went with it seemed like sort of the best way to tell our story. And it seemed to me the most interesting way. Um, um, so, you know, as you watch the movie, you, you see sort of the, the connectivity with, with obviously Tobin Bell's character and all the other facets of what goes on in the small town. But um, ultimately, that was sort of the most interesting thing. And I've always been interested in, in uh, you know, alien life form and is there anything out there and are we alone? And so all those, all those themes sort of were implemented into, into the story. The Black Eyed Kids, it's their harvest in time. So why do they ask you that question? To let them in. Because they have to. They need permission. Or whatever you do, never say yes. How it's very specific, specifically targeted kind of for more, more of a younger audience who kind of want to make their way kind of into horror movies now at the same time. Yeah. Was it, was it difficult for you to find just that a kind of a happy balance between keeping it kids safe, family friendly, whilst, I mean, some of the scenes, especially kind of at the beginning and towards the end, they do kind of get quite scary. Was that, was it difficult to find that happy balance between the two? Yeah, um, you know, there were some moments where we wanted to turn it up a little bit in certain scenes, but you, you have to, you know, think about it. And, you know, as much as your, your adult self is telling you that you can turn things up a little bit, you kind of have to, reconfigurate and and keep it within the the, the realm of what this demographic is going to be um it wasn't difficult to do because I, I think when we set out to write the screenplay a lot of this was was on the page um but there were a couple moments like oh it'd be cool if we but then you know oh, maybe that's taking a little too far but um but i think yeah i i i feel like even though this is sort of an entree in this film is an entree into uh, darker, more scarier films, we still wanted to have moments of, of creepiness and scariness because, you know, 
I, I remember growing up and watching certain things and there were things that creeped me out and scared me, but I still wanted to watch it. It still got me interested in the genre. And so, um, so I felt like we were able to balance that pretty well with Let Us In. As, as I said, it's, it is kind of aimed for kind of adolescence, but at the same time, this urban legend is something that has been in the news as kind of adults have said that it's happened. So, I mean, dealing with this kind of, premise and there's these themes how did you go through it with the kids yeah you know it's weird when you <clears throat> when you're on set and you're shooting the film it's much more kind of technical and you know everybody know you know all the cast knows each other whether you're the antagonist or the protagonist so they're they're already friends so they they you know it's not like they're which probably would have been the best way to go is for them to be scared of them all the time make it method so it's it's more organic but these actors that we worked with were so great and they were they just did such a great job in their performances and they were able to make everything real and um you know and that was one of the things that you're always concerned about going into making these films is just making it as real as you can and um the performances as real as they can be and so um they 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 were all terrific. We were very lucky because uh, the cast in this film was just terrific. It just such, they did just, uh, such a great job, and and of course we had Tobin Bell, and the adults were great. And Tobin Bell, who is phenomenal, just the nicest guy, and worked well with the kids. And it just we were very lucky with that because sometimes that doesn't was, go as well. Was, was Tobin the first choice, or was it, was that just happenstance that you managed to? Uh... To get him at the right time at the right place. We got him. We got him at the right time at the right place. He he was uh, available, and so we were. And I love. I we really wanted him, and so you know we were hoping that we would get him. And um, he he really loved the screenplay. He loved that we had a twelve year old female protagonist in, in in the story. He loved that, and. Um, and he loved his character, so it just it it its timing worked out for him. So we were we were really lucky. For yeah, no, I mean I really thought I thought it was a really beautiful scene that he shared with the two kids when they're having that conversation because it's that that's something that you don't usually say. I don't, I don't even think I've seen uh, Tobin uh, do a scene like right. that. Right, right, right. Well. Yeah, yeah, he was so good with the kids too. He was terrific, and, and I thought he, you know he's such a great actor. His performance was was great. It, we, I mean, I don't want to give anything away, but Emily is great as Mackenzie. Um, sorry, Mackenzie's great as Emily. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yes. And, and I could see this kind of working out as, as kind of she solves different problems in, in, in kind of various spin-offs or se sequels. Is that something that you have in mind? We'd love that. I mean, obviously that would be great if we are in a situation where this film is well-received and, and we're, you know, then obviously we would love to do sequels. It's always fun to do sequels. It's, the, it's you know, it, that's sort of the, the icing on the cake, so to speak. So yeah, we'd love it. So if you can make that happen, I would be indebted to you. Okay, well, our readers are watching, so fingers crossed. Okay, thank <laughs> well, you so much. Great. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we're out of time, thank, but you. thank you so much. I wish you the best of luck with the film when it comes out next week. And I hope to speak to you uh, sometime soon. Absolutely. We'll do this again. Appreciate it. Thank right. you for having me. All the best. Take care. Take care. Then. Bye now. Okay. You think you'll get out alive?